So two weeks ago we got a Variety article which went over the entire future and next few years of the Star Trek franchise, and inside of that article we got to see the various Star Trek films that are in development as well as learn a little bit of information about them. It was all pretty exciting. Now we're potentially going to have a Star Trek movie every year from this year, 2024, onwards for the foreseeable future, and there's about six different films in various stages of development or post-production or pre-production at the moment with more potentially on the way, so I thought it would be really fun to kind of go over each individual film and with the ones we know less about maybe speculate on what exactly they'll be about or what exactly they'll be or what we'll see in them that'd be pretty fun but the first film that we're going to be seeing later on this year is section 31 which is done filming originally a tv show starring with shelly yo as philippa georgiou is now a, a permanent plus streaming film which i think is a better idea than a tv show i'm not sure how great this idea would have been as just a complete TV show, but we know a decent bit about the film. That We now know that it's going to have Casey role as Rachel Garrett, Rachel Garrett being the character who we saw in Star Trek Next Generation's third season episode, Yesterday's Enterprise, and she's the captain of the Enterprise C in that timeline. This basically means that the film is probably going to be set in the lost era of Star Trek history, which is the period from 2293 at the beginning of Star Trek Generations until 2364 in Star Trek Next Generation first season. So this is pretty exciting, it's a timeline that that's barely been explored outside of the expanded universe, and I think it'd be really cool to see what they're going to do here. Now, I should say that judging by the fact that Philip Jojo is somebody who has been time traveling lately, it's not completely set in stone that this will be a lost era film. It's just pretty much maybe that it is based off the fact that it's Rachel Garrett, because I don't know, I don't think that they'd go and have Rachel Garrett be a character who's time traveling around before she becomes captain of the Enterprise C. But this is going to be a young version of that character, so the 2320s is probably likely going off of that since her appearance in Yes. Yesterday's Enterprise is a Rachel Garrett from the 2340s. So this is going to be really interesting. I will say that the addition of Rachel Garrett and the Lost Era made me a lot more excited for this project. It was a project I wasn't overly into when they first announced it, mainly just because I think Section 31 in general isn't the most interesting thing in Star Trek to me. I think that Deep Space Nine handled them very well, but even outside of that, I don't think, like, even an Enterprise and stuff like that, I don't think Section 31 was an overly interesting concept. So I think kind of framing an entire TV show about them was not the most interesting way to go and I think turning it into a film is at least sort of making sure that they can get the project done you know seeing more Michelle Yao who's great and now bringing in interesting dynamics like doing a Lost Era stuff and doing Rachel Garrett and it, it's going to be streaming on Paramount Plus exclusively so excited for that. The next film likely that we're going to see is a prequel film directed by Toby Haynes, who's known for Andor, and written by Seth Graham Smith. Now, pre-production is due to start at the end of the year. They're actually very far along on this project, so we could be seeing this film by as early as late 2025 if they start pre-production by the end of this year. Maybe early 2026, but I'm going to explain in a few minutes why I think 2026 probably isn't likely for this film unless it gets delayed. There's no guarantee this film will get made. So many Star Trek films have been meant to enter pre-production at some point over the last Few years and just haven't so fingers crossed this one will actually get made but it seems to be further along than most star trek films get lately they've said that this is going to be a prequel film to the entire beginning of the star trek main franchise so it's not even set in the kelvin timeline like a lot of us used to think it now seems to be set in the main timeline the prime universe and it's going to be a prequel to that so this kind of opens up the doors for a lot of really 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 interesting things like is this the birth of the federation because while we did see sort of the background shots of the birth of the federation in the very last episode of star trek enterprise we never actually saw the full speech we never saw the full the full thing that led to the birth of the federation as Enterprise was cancelled before we could kind of get there. So maybe it would be really interesting to see all of that. My only thing is, how many of the Enterprise cast could you get back for something like that? Would you even want to get them back? Like, I I don't think Star Trek would recast, but they've already done that for Strange New Worlds with certain members of the original Enterprise Constitution class crew. So maybe we could see some recasts of characters from Star Trek Enterprise if the cast do not want to return. But it's also, Enterprise is not even that old of a series, only about... 20 years old at this point a lot of the cast are still around the only problem is the birth of the federation was very close to when enterprise ended it's only about six years after the end of enterprise seven years at most i think so you would need to maybe make the cast look a little bit younger but it'll be interesting to see what direction they take the fact that it's described as a prequel to the entire franchise makes me believe birth of the federation is likely since the united federation of planets is something we haven't seen the beginning of in live action yet or in any real forms outside of books comics stuff like that now there's also other options it could be world war tree based in the late 21st century just before first contact it could be maybe 
after first contact that'd be really interesting it could be romulan war centric which is also something enterprise got cancelled before they could show the romulan war starting in 2155 right after enterprise got cancelled so it would be really cool to see something like that i think romulan war or birth of the federation is the most likely thing here because world war 3 or post first contact as interesting as that might be to star trek fans i can't see that being something that overly gets non-star trek fans excited if you're doing a prequel to the entire franchise you should probably do something that's going to be a little bit recognizable to people who might not necessarily be your traditional star trek fan because if this is going to be a theatrically released film you're going to want to expand that to an audience outside of just star trek fans so i think birth of the federation or romulan war is likely there because you can still get a lot of elements that a star trek film would have while still being very much related to the the lore of the universe for fans i would really like to see something like this i think this might be my most anticipated film on the list just because the options here are kind of endless on what it could possibly be now originally i thought this was going to be a chris hemsworth maybe george kirk focused film kind of since the kelvin timeline teased that and that was originally the plan for star trek 4 but since this isn't kelvin timeline that kind of throws that out the window which only leads me to the next film and probably the film that will come out after this star trek 4 which is going to be the final film in the kelvin timeline steve yoki is writing the script and this is likely aiming for a 2026 release date which would line up with the 60th anniversary of the franchise now the reason why i don't think the prequel film will release in 2026 is because this is probably when they're going to get star trek 4 out now it's possible the prequel film could be 2026 and star trek 4 will be 2027 but both of these films seem to be aiming for theatrical releases so i highly doubt that they will release both of them in the same year or even within a year of each other i think we're probably looking at like summer to late of two separate years here so i think the plan is probably the prequel film for late 2025 and then star trek 4 for maybe like summer 2026 which that could be really cool but the question here is who is returning obviously anthony Atchum will not be able to return since he unfortunately passed away around the time of star trek beyond's release but for the rest of the cast it's kind of up in the air who will return they've announced so many versions of star trek 4 over the year and at one point they announced one with the entire returning cast saying that everyone was going to be back like we were going to get Zachary Quinto, Chris Pine, Zoe Saldana, everybody and then we kind of heard from people like Zachary Quinto that they never ever ever signed on for anything and they were so surprised to see that announcement because they were like there's been nothing decided like we don't know if we're coming back yet so it'll be interesting to see if they are able to get the entire cast because I've said this before but the, the Star Trek Kelvin timelines have such a cast that have blown up in an insane way like go back watch 2009 star trek you'll be so surprised how many huge cast members are in that who have blown up since like so sultana has been in like four films that have crossed the billion the billion dollar box office since star trek 2009 came out like she is huge now and that kind of goes for a lot of the cast here so it'll be interesting to see who they see now the original star trek 4 is going to be a time travel kind of film that would have chris hemsworth returning as george kirk and sort of have him meet the sun and see everything there this will kind of line up with like how you know Star Trek Into Darkness felt like it was somewhat Star Trek Wrath of Khan again this I guess could feel like it's somewhat Star Trek Voyage Home again since it's doing time travel the same as the original Star Trek 4 did so it'll be interesting to see kind of what this exactly is now there's no confirmation it is Chris Hemsworth the only confirmation we have is that it'll be the final film in the Kelvin timeline and that Steve Yoki is writing the script that's kind of it so we're sort of up in the air on exactly what we're going to see here but I think you know if they wanted to go with the original idea of Chris Hemsworth coming back if they can get him that'd be really cool is this Chris Hemsworth also a cast member who's blown up in such a huge way since his Star Trek appearance so it'll be interesting to see who they get Following this is a film we do not know much about, written by Kalanda Vesquez, is a Star Trek original film. Kalanda was a Discovery writer. It's still in development as of this year, so we'll see that. We have literally no other information to go off of, but considering it's just in development, it's probable this will be like the next film after this maybe 2027 unclear whether this is going to be a paramount plus film or this will be a theatrical released film but it'll it, it's interesting to see anyway i think kind of this is going to be one of those films that feels very unique and very different and maybe isn't connected to anything we currently have because every other film on this list is sort of tied to something we already have section 31 is tied to obviously star trek discovery pretty heavily the prequel film will be tied to a lot of things we've heard about in the franchise and star trek 4 obviously tied to the kelvin timeline i think this is the film that could very much be something new and something that's not really tied to anything we've seen before which i think is really important as much as i would i love the idea of seeing a lot of things we've heard about and characters we've heard about in the franchise for so many years i think it's really important 
to also have something that's pretty original, pretty new, that doesn't feel stuck or tied to a lot of canon or lore, so that you can bring in new fans, because franchises can't survive without new fans coming in. But it's, this is something that I think we'll probably see after that, depending on these next two films, or I guess the the streaming films in general because in the Variety article they talk about how if Section 31 is a success we can expect to see more streaming films which this makes sense to me I think expanding to have Star Trek streaming films on Paramount Plus as much as possible is a really good plan we could see a lot of really cool and interesting ideas there and they're talking about how if Section 31 is successful we will definitely see a sequel to it with Michelle Yeoh returning so that'll be pretty exciting and Michelle Yeoh is really busy so it'll be interesting to see kind of if they can get this off the ground pretty quickly or if it'll take its time also when will it be set if the first film set in maybe the 2320s maybe a sequel set in like the 2330s or the 2340s could be really cool if we kind of sort of start to close that gap between generations and next generation will be really cool i would really like to see this now there's obviously no even tiny hints of what the storyline might be or what the year will be or who will see in it maybe this will be like a direct sequel maybe it'll be a prequel who knows but it's really exciting nonetheless i think a secretary one film that may return to the mirror universe could be really cool if we could see kind of what happens there that'd be awesome so yeah this is something that again we'll have to wait and see if it happens now in January 2024, Patrick Stewart said that a potential film starring him, Star Trek film, could be written. In this Variety article, we heard that another streaming film that's on the table is a Picard follow-up or Picard sequel. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not overly into the idea of a Patrick Stewart-focused Star Trek film again. I think Star Trek Picard was a good wrap-up to that whole cast and that whole generation, and I think we should probably be moving on. I think, you know, Seven of Nine, Rafi, Jack, that's all set up at the end of Star Trek Picard Season 3. I think that could be a really interesting film to make, but it doesn't seem like Star Trek Legacy is kind of what they're thinking about here. It seems like whatever film that they'd potentially make would be based around Patrick Stewart as Jean-Luc Picard. But, you know, I think we've had so many endings for the characters at the moment. We had all good things at the end of Next Generation. We had Star Trek Nemesis, which sure wasn't the best ending, but it was still sort of a wrap-up. And then we had the ending of Star Trek Picard Season 3. And Star Trek Picard Season 3 still very fresh only finishing about a year ago so i think already jumping into another sequel there might not be the best idea i think this is the one project on this list that if it is focused on patrick stewart it's the one i'm the the most apprehensive about or the one i'm not sure we need whereas i think everything else we could do with but this is the one where i'm like do we really need to see this but we'll wait and see there's obviously no real details on it yet maybe it's something really interesting maybe it's a really cool concept and they also just talked about how we'll potentially see other streaming films depending on the success of Section 31, which, yeah, that'd be really exciting. So, yeah, that is every Star Trek film that is currently in some form of development, production, post-production. It's really, really exciting, kind of in a, a full-on era of Star Trek films, which we haven't had any Star Trek films since Star Trek Beyond in 2016. So, yeah, which film on this list are you most excited for? Are there any ideas you want to see that, that they haven't really talked about yet that you would really like to see in a film? Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, all that. Maybe share it to somebody you think might like it. And I hope you have an amazing day.